So welcome to today's lesson on our Proposition Start One course. So today we're talking about the <coughs> total probability rule, which is also known as the law of um, total probability. Right. So let's quickly. So you know, mostly the total probability rule um, is used to find the probability of an event when we don't know much about the probability of that event. To be able to calculate it directly. So here there is a theorem. And the theorem states that if a1, a2 up to a n form a partition of a sample space S, then for any event B defined on S such that the probability of B is greater than zero. The probability of A is B is greater than zero because probability can never be less than zero. It's between zero and one. It can never be negative. So the total probability rule is giving us this particular relation that we have here. So let's quickly illustrate what we are seeing here. So we are seeing a probability of B is giving us summation i cross n, probability of a i, then time probability of B given a i. Right. So for instance, if our n is equal to two, that means if our sample space s is divided into two partitions. So that means you are going to have a1 here and a2 here. So that means that our n is 2. So when we expand, you are going to get probability of b b equal to summation i starting from 1 to 2 because now our n is 2. The probability of a i then time probability of b given a i. Right? So when we expand this, when i is equal to 1, we have probability of a1 times probability of b given a1 plus because of the summation the probability of a2 then time probability of b given a2 so that's what um it states so suppose a and b are events in an unempty sample space s yes, we can express the event a as this so um by going through some assumptions then we get this and we get that Right, so let's try to also show why those things are so. So we are seeing our A is equal to A intersection B union A intersection the complement of B. That's what this stands for. So when you take your probability true, we have probability of A, then probability of A intersection B union, probability of A intersection B complement. So remember that from our conditional probability, we said probability of A given B is probability of A intersection B all over probability of B. So when you make probability of A intersection B the subject, we have probability of A given B times probability of B. I hope you get it. Alright. Then now, when you have probability of A given the probability of B complement, this will be P A intersection B complement, all the probability of B complement. So that means making this the subject, we will end up with probability of A. So this is what we will end up with. I hope you get it. So now this is our probability of A intersection B complement and this is our probability of A intersection B. So we come here and replace it here. So wherever we see this, we put this there. Wherever we see this, we put the other one there. So when we do that, we are going to have probability of A to be equal to the probability of A given B and the probability of B then plus probability of A Given B complement times probability of B complement. So please note this carefully. We are going to use this relation to solve lots of problems. Okay, so let's go back to our notes. So you can read this. So there is a question here for us to address. The question says an insurance company classifies people as accident prone and non accident prone for a fixed year. 
the probability that an accident prone person has an accident is 0 0.4 and the probability that a non-accident prone person has an accident is 0 0.2 the population is estimated to be 30 percent accident prone what is the probability that a new policyholder will have an accident so after reading the question the next thing is to get our data okay right so let's go and get our data here so the question said um an insurance company classifies people as accident prone and non-accident prone so you let's check something here so here we define our a to be policyholder who has an accident and our b to be policyholder who is accident prone right so let me write that here so a is policyholder who has accident so I'm writing it in shortcut. Then our B is policyholders, those who are accident prone. So note that A complement will be policyholders who um who don't like who didn't have an accident because it is going to be opposite. So if you are saying that A is policyholder that has an accident, then the complement of A will be the opposite. So policy or that would does not have an accident. So that's going to be A complement. So does not have accident. Right. Then uh, B, the complement of B will be those who are non-accident prone. Because B is those who are accident prone. So B complement will be those who are non-accident prone. Alright, that's cool. So right now, our question said, um, let's go back to our question. So our question said, an insurance company, blah, blah, blah. So it says, the probability, the probability that an accident, one person has an accident is 0 0.4. So, the probability that So the probability that um where is it? The probability that an accident prone person has an accident is 0.4. So the probability that someone has an accident, given that the person is accident prone is 0.4. So that's how we write it um in probability. Then let's go and get our next data. It says that in the probability that an non-accident prone person has an accident is 0.2. So that one can also be represented as so probability that um so probability that someone has an accident given that the person is non-accident prone is 0 0.2 from the question so we are getting our data from the question then here it says that the population is estimated to be 30 percent accident prone so that means probability of those who are accident prone is 30 percent so let's go back so that means probability of b that's those who are accident prone is 30 percent so that's 0 0.3 so that means those who are not accident prone will be that's the probability of b component to be 1 minus 0 0.3 which will give us 0 0.7 so i want you to take a very careful look at this set of data that we have here because that's what we are going to use to solve our question one so the question one says that what is the probability that a new policy holder will have an accident? So that means they are trying to find for the probability of A. So now from here, let me come up. Come up. So we said probability of A is given by this relation here. We have shown that. So we are going to code this and use it to find for our solution to question one. So probability of A will be given as probability of A given B. So the probability of B plus the probability of A giving B complement times the probability of B complement. So this is going to give us what probability of A giving B? That's 0 0.4. Probability of B is 0 0.3. And this gives us um, 0 0.2 times 0 0.7. So we are going to have, sorry, 
we're going to have 0 0.12 here plus 0 0.14 here, which gives us 0 0.26. So that means that that's the solution to our uh, question 1 or the A question. So let's go to II. <coughs> so it says that, so yeah, this is the solution here, but note that here there is supposed to be complement, so there is supposed to be a bar here. It is supposed to be a bar here, okay? All right, so it says now suppose that the policyholder does does have an accident. What is the probability that he was accident prone? So simply we are just finding for um, I mean, so then we are just finding probability of B giving A. So if the person is accident prone, let's look at the question. So now suppose that the policy order does not have an accident, what's the probability that he was accident prone? So we are supposed to find probability of B given A. So we know that, um, let's go back to our question. Probability of B given A from our condition probability is probability of B intersection A, which is the same as probability of A intersection B. So all over probability of A. So probability of B intersection A um s yes. so we can also expand it and when you expand if you are going to get this right you remember from the relation that we said that probability of a given b is probability of a intersection b all our probability of b so when you make this the subject then that means when you make this the subject you are going to get probability of a intersection b will be equal to probability of A given B time probability of B. Remember that probability of A intersection B is the same as probability of B intersection A. So note that. And I mean this is going to give us probability of A given B time probability of B which gives us probability of or probability of A. So this will give us 0. Point Four. Remember this is 0 0.4 and this is 0 0.3 all over our A which we just found to be 0 0.26 and when you compute this it gives you 0 0.46 so that's the solution to this question so thank you that's going to be all for our total probability rule so the next thing you have to study is the I think um, the base rule so the base rule, that's very, very important as well.